There are heightened co global concerns around food supply system, but President Mohamed Buhari says his administration will not lose focus in its quest for food security. Also, warned, he also warned the Central Bank of Nigeria against issuing the country's reserves for importation of food items and fertilizer. In other parts of the country, we will be focusing on flood and its effects. These and more on Panorama in a moment. I am Sadia Umardiki. Nothing succeeds like success. These were the exact words of President Muhammad Buhari to formally congratulate the newly re-elected president of the Africa Development Bank, Dr. Akimumi Adeshino, who paid him a thank you visit. State House correspondent Adam Usambo has the report. Has Akimumi Adeshino had without doubt overcome stiff opposition to win an unprecedented 100% vote from both the regional and non-regional blocs that make up the African Development Bank to retain his position as president for a second term of five years. <laughs> <laughs> president Muhammad Buhari had recommended Dr. Adeshino and supported his election both in 2015 and this year, despite the differences in their political affiliation. The FDB president served as minister under the PDP government and President Muhammad Buhari belongs to the APC. Given reasons for his support, the Nigerian leader said Dr. Adeshina is not only a good Nigerian and proves to be competent, but also made the nation proud. He used the opportunity to commend the bank's chief for the intervention by the financial institution in Nigeria and Africa, stressing that the infrastructural deficits the country has in roads, rail, and power could not be overcome without the support and wished him all the best in his final term. The FDB president thanked President Buhari and Nigerians for their support, saying he is proud to be a citizen of Nigeria where his dream was born, nurtured, and supported for realization. He particularly appreciated the president for not only standing behind but also beside him, saying no greater honor for a man than for his commander-in-chief to be his supporter-in-chief and indeed his defender-in-chief. Dr. Adeshina said Nigeria gave him air when he badly needed it and therefore pledged to always support the country in his private capacity and as president of the African Development Bank. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. President Mohamed Buhari says the heightened global concern around food supply system, notwithstanding his administration, will neither weaver nor lose focus in its quest for food security. Speaking at a crucial meeting of the National Food Security Council, the president assured farmers of government's continued support to the various food enhancement initiatives and many more to come. State House correspondent Adam Sambu again reports. The meeting presided over by President Muhammad Buhari was in response to the recent surge in food prices with the ability to threaten genuine efforts at achieving national food security. Events in the last six months, for instance, occasioned by COVID-19, the President said, have demonstrated vulnerabilities to food supply systems around the world and exposed the limits of dependency on other countries. He said the wisdom by the federal government to promote self-sufficiency over the years helped significantly in averting food crisis. The nation thanks our farmers for rising to the occasion and answering a national call. I am pleased to note that most Nigerians are taking advantage of the opportunities in the agriculture and the agribusiness sector. I want to assure you that this government will continue to support these initiatives and many more to come. He described as delightful that in spite of the decline in GDP by 6.1% in the second quarter of 2020, the agricultural sector continued to grow because of government's targeted policies on agriculture. While our key actors in the agricultural space are championing increased hectares under cultivation, we need to vote 
our attention and resources to how we can improve yield per hectare. This new shift will be a significant boost in our determination to strengthen our objective in achieving food security. And to protect agricultural investments and boost farmers' confidence, the federal government deployed thousands of agro rangers and integrated rural communities to the formal economy, while strategic grants reserves built and stocked from where significant quantities released to cushion the adverse impact of COVID-19 on vulnerable households and industries. Unfortunately, the recent floods have adversely impacted our preparations. Lives were lost and livelihoods were wiped away. As a government, we will do all it takes to support those impacted by this disaster. The Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, had informed President Buhari that he had earlier met with agricultural commodity associations to ascertain the root causes of the recent spike in food prices. We have been informed that prices are actually currently on the decline as new grains have been introduced to the market. For example, new maize, which was previously sold at 25,000 naira per bag, is now being sold between 12 thousand and seventeen thousand naira and is expected to fall between seven thousand and eight thousand naira per bag by november 2020. i'm confident that the commitment of the nigerian government ably led by president muhammad buhari and mobilization of all stakeholders there's very strong expectation of high output during this uh, harvest season. Because Nigerians are waking up to the belief that, yes, we should take pride in what we produce and consume what we produce. Apart from receiving updates on presidential directives and initiatives aimed at protecting and further enhancing food security in Nigeria, the meeting was also briefed on the 2020 wet and dry seasons, economic sustainability interventions, humanitarian support, as well as agricultural development initiatives of the Central Bank of Nigeria. From the State House, Adam Sambu, NTA News. NTA News. Mudu Buhari has warned the Central Bank of Nigeria against issuing any cobo of the country's reserve for the importation of food items and fertilizer. The president gave the warning at a closed session of the National Food Security Council, saying he will pass it down in writing that nobody importing food should be given money. He emphasized the need to boost local agriculture as government roll out economic sustainability plans and set goal for national food security. The president also directed blenders of fertilizer to convey their products directly to state governments so as to skip the cartel of transporters, undermining efforts of successfully delivering the product to users at reasonable costs. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Dr. Zainab Ahmed, highlighted government's resolve to facilitate the cultivation of 20,000 to 100,000 hectares of new farmland in every state and support the takeoff of agro-processing to create millions of direct and indirect opportunities. On his part, the Controller General of Customs, Colonel Hamid Ali, expressed the hope of an early reopening of the partially closed borders given, to the, pro given the progress made with neighboring states in joint border patrols, one of the key conditions by Nigeria for reopening of the borders. The Joint Health Sector Workers' Union is to present the outcome of the reconciliatory meeting to its members for consultation and get back to government by Saturday, the 12th of September. The resolution was reached in Abuja after hours of meeting. Both parties resolved that the Ministry of Health implement some of the gray areas identified, while the Accountant General's Office is to consider the names of those not captured for the COVID-19 hazard allowances be factored in the June payment, as well as those who suffered from salary shortfall. I joined our uh, main meeting the 15th. the 15th of October. Yes. They enabled the Federal Ministry of Health 
carry out the assignments given to them in four weeks and use the subsequent week to report back at the meeting of 15th of October. Although we still have some fundamental uh, fallouts that requires further consultation with our members, we believe we'll get back to government uh, with uh, the position of the powerful neck that mandated us to give the ultimate on by Saturday. On the 15th of October, 2020, the Independent National Electoral Commission says it will embark on massive mop-up of card reader machines to ensure prompt reconfiguration for October 10th governorship election in Ondo State. INEC National Commissioner in charge of Information and Voter Education, Festus Okoye, gave the update on last night's fire incident at the Ondo State INEC office in Akure. Olajide Bello has details. The inferno, which lasted for about two hours, took the combined efforts of the Federal Fire Service from the airport in Agre and Elisha Command due to the inability of the Ondo State Fire Service. In the early hours of Friday 11th, the fire had been totally put off with remnants of the card readers dotting the landscape of parts of the INEC office. It's alarming. I got in there. They, to my dismay, the only thing I saw was people filming and sending this on social media. There was just a little uh, firefighter truck there, which was far below containing what was ex I mean, what it, what it entails. On its part, INEC says the understood governorship elections will still hold. What we intend to do, based on some of these challenges we have, is to mop up smart card readers from uh, the other contiguous states uh, in order to uh, make up for the total number that we have lost. Uh, so if we just take smart card readers from two of the states that do not have any form of election uh, during this particular period, we are going to uh, uh, recover. Uh, Preliminary investigations by the police to prevent future occurrence have commenced in Agre or Lajide below NTA News. News. Don't go away. For now, the best and most efficient way to avoid getting infected is through regular hygienic and sanitary practices as well as social distancing. As individuals, we remain the greatest weapon to fight this pandemic. By washing our hands regularly with clean water and soap, disinfecting frequently used surfaces and areas, coughing into a tissue or elbow, and strictly adhering to infection prevention control measures in health facilities, we can contain this virus. Coronavirus is real. Steps to avoid this pandemic. Wash your hands regularly or sanitize your hands. Keep social and physical distancing. Avoid crowded places. Stay at home unless absolutely necessary. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth if your hands are not clean. Avoid the spread of coronavirus. Coronavirus is real.
297 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed in Nigeria as part of the 10th, as at the 10th of September 2020. The outbreak by the National Center for Disease Control shows that Plateau State has the highest number of cases with 83. Lagos has 48, Kaduna 17, FCT 16, Ogun 11, Kasina 7, Imo 4, Edo and Nesara 3 each, Rivers 2, while Bayelsa, Uyo, Oshun have one case each. This brings the total number of confirmed cases in this country to 55,829 with 43,810 discharged and 1,075 deaths recorded. As Sokoto State joins other states of the Federation to celebrate the certification of Nigeria as a polio-free nation, the need to sustain the successes achieved has been stressed. This came to the fore at the monthly meeting of the State Tax Force on Polio Eradication and Routine Immunization. The latter Abdullahi reports. The monthly review meeting on polio eradication and routine immunization resumed after six months due to the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. Sokoto has ever reason to celebrate the certification of Nigeria as polio-free as the state had partnered agencies from within and outside the country to see that the desired result is attained. And the state government shouldered this responsibility to see the end of all the killer diseases fully inclusive. I urge all of us to maintain that zeal to see that we complete the tax assigned to us. On routine immunization, the state is targeting 85% coverage of children below the age of five years. So far, about 60% coverage has been achieved in some local governments, while in few others, the coverage is still low due to the challenge of circulating vaccine preventable infections. There are so many factors that are responsible for, for that. Uh, one of them is also the low coverage of uh, routine immunization, uh, and as well as other some of other factors that are also associated. Ensuring that all the newborns receive all doses of vaccines against childhood killer diseases remains the responsibility of all. In Sokoto, Dalat Abdullahi, NTA News. Farmers in Sokoto are appealing to state and federal governments to intervene in reducing the losses they incurred as a result of flooding in their farmlands. Sheikh Muhammad Detti reports that fishermen, on the other hand, are making the best out of the situation. These farmers are trying to get what is left from their maize farm submerged by water. They have to swim to harvest the premature crop. Muhammad Umar said crops like rice, sweet potatoes and millet, among other crops, have been submerged in a landscape that was a vegetation now occupied by water. Uh, it is the same situation for these rice farmers who are trying to salvage the little they could from the pumps. Buhush Shenkaha Buda Ishirin Ankalala Buda Wahala the Kumi the Ket Asamu Buhu Bet. With the prices of food stock presently at record high, Dr. Fai Isho says the disaster may have ramification on the economy with less than expected harvest. The government should understand that there is need for expansion. Expansion of this farming land, particularly those that are very close to uh, the, the rivers, there are need for possibility of new techniques, which are somewhere in the world that we are not still using in this country. With water filled to the brink, Abdullahi Isa, a fisherman, had made some catch after surfing and building traps for us. While farmers are counting their losses, fishermen, on the other hand, are having a field day. In Sokoto, Show Muhammad Deti, NTA News. And now to our discussion segment. With me in the studio is Muhammad Umar, Director Mustafa. Relief. Uh, Mustafa Umar. Uh, he's the Director Relief and Rehabilitation, Sema. Sokoto State. Saya, welcome to the studio. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so, sir, uh, Sokoto is one of the states affected by this year's uh, flooding. How many local governments have been affected so far? So far, 
about 80 local government have been affected by the floods. Um, and this includes Goronyo, Gada, Uruno, Raba, uh, Kwari, Sokotonos, Sokoto South, Sila, Miwamoko, Binji, um, Tambo, Alkepe, uh, Shagari, and uh, uh, other ones. Yes. And we have uh, conducted assessment in almost 14 out of the 18 uh, local government affected. Mm. And so far, the flood has, uh, we have lost 15 people to the flood, mm. Five, 10 of which is uh, as a result of both Mishaf and Goronyu, while people are trying to reach their uh, destination. Mm. While uh, the other five, there are two lives lost in Gada, and two also in Goronyu, and one in Tambua, in Saini district, as a result of uh, destruction from their uh, 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 buildings. Okay. The, so, sir, uh, what's the level of damage? So far, the level of damage, if you look at Sokoto State, we have two dams. Uh, one do is located in Bakulori, and the other one is in Goroyo. Goroyo is the second largest uh, water retention. Uh, uh, it has the second largest water retention capacity uh, in all the dams in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So, and those dams have not been desilted for a quite a long period of time. And whenever uh, there is this kind of uh, flow, uh, the dam control, they have to release uh, the water so that to, they will avoid uh, major catastrophe, which has we witnessed in 2010, where the emergency spillway broke down and then uh, there was a massive flooding. Mm -hmm. So this year's flooding is almost similar to that of 2010, because even areas where initially there was no water, uh -huh. uh, they have not recorded any, um, I mean, uh, they have no record of flooding. Now they are experiencing it. Uh -huh. And so far we have two camps, uh, one in uh, Wurunu, Gidamo, the Gidambongo, they have been evacuated to the SDP secretariat uh -huh. in Wurunu. And then there are other ones uh, in Gandhi. We also ask those people to join the IDP camps that is located in Gandhi. Mm. So far, uh, that is the level of damage. About 250 hectares of farmland, I mean thousands mm. hectares of farmland have been so much mm. down from the Goronyo Dam down to Silami because all the water that is going to Kebi is from Sokoto. Mm. The water comes from Kasena to Rumaradi, it comes to Goronyo Dam, and then it also goes to Kebi State. While in Bokulori, the fastest to Rubakura, local government in Zamfara, they come across Raba, and then they also pass through uh, KB, down to also KB State. Mm -hmm. So those tributaries are the ones uh, collecting much water, which resulted in, into these massive flooding issues. So what's been done to assist these victims? Uh, so far, in our agency, the state government has uh, stepped uh, set off a committee headed by the secretary to the state government, mm -hmm. who is the chairman of that committee. Mm -hmm. So, and they have bring all, brought in all the stakeholders together who uh, have all put, put in hands on decks mm -hmm. to see that this plot is well managed mm -hmm. in the state. So, sir, I'll have to stop you there. That's all we have time for. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Moving on now to our new segment, the African Soccer Governing Board, CAF has announced a new state for a new date rather for the upcoming championship for Africa Nations Chan 2020 tournament. For more on sports updates, here is Tamara Abiwe. Sports fans have heard the proposed naming of Ilonri Township Stadium after late Super Regal striker Rashidi Yakini. Kwara State Governor Abdurrahman Abdurazak, who disclosed the development at a meeting with Youth and Sports Development Minister Sunday Diary, revealed that progress has been made in immortalizing the late football icon. I pay these dues both locally and internationally. I can't wait till the naming will be made official. In 